And now on this Christmas Eve, it's a little after half past seven. Three hundred murders. A detective comedy story which does not entirely come from the pages of that much-loved boys' adventure magazine, Sunny Boy. Written by Colin Free and starring Margot Boy as Maggie and David March as Scobie Dearden. 300 murders. Sir, your cavalier demand for money's due, your impudent final notice is not only an affront, but a premeditated mischief. I will not, however, stoop to mere base rhetoric. Oh, who is that? Who is there? Go away. Sir, is that William Goldberg? No, it's not. Never heard of him. Go away. Go away. Vamoose. Buzz off. But this is the registered office of Sunny Boy Magazine. It says so on the door plate. I won't be dumbed. I won't be pressured. You will get your money through the post. I'm not a debt collector. No hawkers, no circulars, no canvassers. Read the sign. I'm not a salesman. And I don't buy flags. I'm not a charity. I'm Denton Carey, a fan of Sunny Boy. Oh, my dear chap, do come in. I can't. It's locked. Locked? My door is locked. Oh, where's the key? <laughs> I don't need the key. I'm on the inside. <laughs> oh. uh, Denton Carey, a fan of Sunny Boy, and all the way from... The... Mississippi, sir. The Magnolia State. Oh, my dear chap, come in. Do sit down. Sir, just uh, brush aside the uh, galley proofs and manuscripts. Oh. Our Turk, <laughs> printer's blocks, and... Uh, oh, there's my thermos. And my butter shortcake biscuits. Do you realise a... A fan of Sunny Boy? My goodness, I didn't even know they... Oh, uh, mind, mind the heater. Oh. Kerosene. Oh, Black Bess, I got my kettle on. Brewing tea, or stewing tea. I like it strong enough to... A fan of Sunny Boy. Well, I never... Yes, sir... <laughs> Your little magazine has been my guide and star through all my boyhood years in Tokapula. Oh. You gave me, and I'm not ashamed, a set of Christian principles that shaped my life. Whew. That is a commendation. I grew up with Honest Andy. Honest Andy. Peg and Mike. Oh, Peg and Mike. And that true blue spirit of democracy. I know, I know. The fabulous ace investigator. Bill Biff Cunningham, right oh. on, sir. <laughs> I know them all. Oh. Those names are like my... Well, sir, they're kind of like my living kin. <laughs> oh, dear. Sir, are you okay? Did I say something? <laughs> no, it's the stone. It dries the air. Your living kin. I guess you don't have many callers. All alone in here. All alone? Thirty years, old son. Just me, the last of the one-man magazines. Fantastic. Of course, Sunny Boy, it doesn't have the sales these days. Now it's all peekaboo and ooh la la. Ah. <laughs> but we still have Bill Biff Cunningham, and that's enough for me. <laughs> what a man. Huh? What a series. 30 years of ace investigation. What I wouldn't give to meet the writer. Oh, same here, old son. I never have. Oh, come on now. You're joshing me. Never? Never once in 30 years. But how on earth do you mess this... Maggie woman in a minivan. He writes and she delivers. It seems to work. I don't ask any questions. Amazing. First published 1953 with Bill Biff meets the crusher. Oh, what a rump. Oh, boy. Yes, in 53, I sold my cottage. Wife was dead. Young wife, septicemia. Oh. And uh, took these rooms in Goulburn Street. My son was never born, but... Sunny Boy became his own enduring epitaph. Thirty years. Sir, your, uh, uh, teapot's boiling. Yes, that's it. Up and atom. Bill Biff's creed. Show the flag. Raise the colors. <laughs> Biff, damn, sock, crunch. Two down and one to go. 
Oh, what a man! His muscles rippled like reflections in a pond. <laughs> the arrow of his jawbone cleaved the air. Oh, vintage stuff. Gets the pulses pounding. Oh, let's have tea. Let's... Crikey, that's hot. Uh, grab that mug. Uh, so? Tip the pens out. Never mind that. What's this packet? Gift wrapped bickies for our morning tea? A simple gesture, sir. From me to you. In gratitude for years of Sonny Boy. Oh, no, not really. Please, sir, go right ahead. Oh, no, really, no, you shouldn't. Oh, no, no, I can't accept. Just open it, sir. No, no, I can't. Well, what is it? Aftershave? Cigars? Oh, scotch! Oh, I hope you haven't splurged. Because if you have, I shall simply have to... Good grief. Great galloping thunderation. Yes, sir. That's 20,000 US dollars in your hand, and it's yours. To keep your venture solvent. But those are... They're hundred dollar bills. Rounds off to 20,000, sir. Oh, well, I, I can't accept. No, I won't. I mustn't. No, I, I can't. Sit down, sir. Let me pour your tea. Uh, sit. Uh, sit down. Let me explain. Thing is, Mr. Dearden, or Scooby as you sign your column, that my Mississippi daddy is what you call a cotton king, and he endowed me with a quarter of a million dollars. Well, today, as we all know, that's peanuts. Really? But it permits me to make this gesture, and hell, I mean, what's 20,000 these days with petty cash, huh? Milk or sugar? You want it watered down at all? Uh, just, uh, just the way it is, I think. Of course. Vera Kiss, she mightn't like it. Vera? Vera Sylvia Kiss, my daddy's advisor. But hell, the money's mine. I spends it and I gives it. And I give it, sir, that 20,000 all to you. Well, I'm blurred. Well, don't be. You just tuck it in your tucker box. And keep the old flag a-flying, huh? <laughs> Mr. Carey, Denson, No. I... No, don't demur. I just won't hear of it. And when you meet the Major... Oh, I never meet the Major. Well, when you meet that Maggie in the minivan, you can just, you know, drop the word. Explain the mention of the Salvador. The Salvador? I have a little spread in Florida. I'd kind of like to see it mentioned in a Bill Biff mystery yarn. <laughs> oh, but that's advertising. That's not ethical. Sir, that's $20,000 any way you take it. Call it my indulgence. Call it... Denton carries folly. But this here, these are the words I want to see in print. Okay? Bill Biff remembered better times. He remembered... Read it later. Oh. I gotta go now. Now, you just tell Maggie and the Major. And if there's any word from anyone, like Vera Sylvia Keys... Oh, uh, 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 Denton, wait. Now, just a minute. I've got to go. But, uh, uh, but where can I reach you? Rialto, down on Denham Street. Anchors up, old boy. Huh? <laughs> oh, Maggie, Maggie. The Major isn't going to like this one little bit. <laughs> Denton Carey from Tocopolo in America? I've never heard of him. <laughs> well, Maggie, I don't suppose you would have. And $20,000 just like that? Oh, well, they do that sort of thing, Americans. Well, I don't know. I just don't know. So what do you think? Hmm? I mean, uh, the whole shebang. Oh, I think it's delicious. More than I deserve. I usually need my minivan and eat my sandwiches in the park. No, I mean about the... Uh... Oh, yes, I know. I'm thinking... Love the lemon so. Uh, and uh, what about some pudding? They say the trifle's very good. Mr. Dearden. Some more wine? Please. Mr. Dearden, I've been tootling in my minivan for seven years, ever since they put the postage up so astronomically. And this is the very first time you've taken me out to lunch. Oh, well, an oversight. And at the Royal Salad Bowl? I'm, I'm just not used to this. Better days, Maggie. Days of promise. How's the Major? Still churning out those stirring tales? Well, he's never missed a deadline. 
You should know. And that last one was a cracker. Bill Biff versus Captain Crag absolutely smashing. Mr. Dearden, what exactly do you want? What does Denton Carey want? Want? What did I say? Well, there must be something. I get lunch, and you get $20,000. Well, there was just one little thing. I thought so. You've heard of Vanity Publishing. Chap pays to see his piece in print. Well, <laughs> Denton wants to drop this in. Just a few short lines. Into what? Into Sunny Boy. But where? What part? <laughs> Into, well, you know... What's the name? The, um... <clears throat> into Major Best's latest yarn. Now, I know the general feeling, but I found the very place. And the style, you know, it's, it's pretty fair. He's got the flavour. It's not half bad, and I doubt that anyone would... I know, Maggie. Case of ethics, integrity, and so forth. But he did pay $20,000. Are you going to have a pudding? No. No, I'm not. Nor am I. Oh, I wish you would. I doubt if I could. Well, finish your wine, anyway. You drinking yours? I should have ordered some coffee. Well, that's it, then. Maggie. I have to get some air. Well, this place is air-conditioned. Real air, sea air. If I stay a moment longer, I think I'll... I, I think I'll spificate. Maggie, you feeling any better? You didn't have to follow me. I rather thought I should. Did you pay the bill? Of course. Leave a tip. Fifteen percent. Well, it wasn't worth it. No, I don't suppose it was. Kobe, I've been a bit of a chump, you know. Really? Yes. I thought our lunch today was a kind of celebration. Celeb? Your birthday. Oh, have I gone and missed... Oh, surely not. A good grief. No, no, it's, it's not my birthday. That Captain Crag you're going to publish, the Major's latest yarn... Yes? ...is really rather special. <laughs> but Major Best is always rather special. But special in a special kind of way. I don't quite follow, my dear. Well, with that story, Bill Biff Cunningham has solved 300 murder cases. Good Lord. Great Scott. Holy mackerel. 300 murder cases. Something for the book of records, don't you think? Oh, by golly, I should say so. 300. And never cheated on his readers once. Never. He played a good straight bat. Presented all the evidence. The alibis, the suspects, I can vouch for that. And in the summing up... He clinched it every time. The prince of logic. That's my definition. 300 murders. Of course, the Major's not a Christie or a Sayers. Oh, no, no, but just the same. And our hero's not a Peter Whimsey or a Hercule Poirot. And don't our dear young readers bless him for it. A good two-fisted climax the Major does deliver. He has his style. He has his genius. Not only murders, Maggie, but a panoply of villains. <laughs> Who would have dreamed the Crusher was the kindly Dr. Syme? <laughs> well, or that uh, <laughs> Captain Crag was the artist Evelyn Ash. Yes, I... Twist of double twist. A master, a veritable Houdini of crime fiction. I'm glad you think so. Maggie, I'll tell you one thing. Major Best is the last of the up-and-atom, red-blooded, square-jawed, boy's own writers. I'm especially glad you think so, because Major Best is me. I beg your pardon? There is no Major Best. Well, I, I mean there is, but not the Major Best. Uh, oh, uh, hell's teeth. There's only me. I'm Major Bess. I, I've written more than half those yarns. No, but hang on. My father, he was Major Best, and he began the series, and when he died... You took the rest. Well, I had to live. And used his name. Oh, what else? I, I'm also L.N. Best. Well, you're Maggie. You're Maggie in the minivan. I'm Maggie Ellen Best. Ellen makes a pretty fair L.N., don't you think? Maggie Ellen. I've been duped. Bill Biff's biffed me good and proper this time. But does it matter? Now you know. No, no, it doesn't matter. I but... thought it rather dense. You didn't guess. Good Lord, I think it's come to this. Well, it's true. I'm not two-fisted up an atom. I'm just... Well, I'm 
Maggie and the Mini then. Well, I didn't mean that. Well, I'm... Oh, I'm 57, getting past it. Good tweed skirts and tinted hair. I know what I am. Bit of a frump. I like my cream cakes and it shows. I live alone. Two cats, Wild Bill the Budgie and Father's Book of Surefire Plot. I'm just Maggie, Mr. Dearden. And all I have is Big Bill Cunningham to see me through. That and 300 bloody murders. Maggie. Murders with blood. Oh. <laughs> Scoby. Yes, Maggie? Oh, should I call you Major Best? Scoby, I won't have my 300th murder tampered with. I won't have people dropping in their paragraphs no matter how they sit. And what the devil is a Salvador in any case? Oh, it's just a little spread in Florida, a sort of motel kind of place, a sort of Denson Carey folly. Well, let him keep it. Let him find another magazine. But he's a fan of Sonny Boy. And I am a major L.M. Best. Oh, dear. Oh, Scobie, I, I know what it means to you. It means you lose your $20,000. It means financial ruin. But one's quite used to that. Look, um, um, couldn't you run a special little paragraph, box it off, just for Denton Carey? Shouldn't think so, no. But if it's just to see his name in light... Well, that's not the way he put it. He seemed to want it buried in the copy. Well, I am sorry. I really am. Yes, you said that. I just have to, uh... Well, send the money back. Send it back. All that money. Twenty thousand dollars. It was a gift. Yes, with certain strings attached. <sighs> I'll send it back. Maybe you could do a deal with Denton Cairn. I'll send it back. Or come to some arrangement. I'll send country. it back. I don't want his Mississippi money. Hang on. Just a sec. I can't send it back. There's no address. He didn't leave one. No address? No. But he just walked in and put the money down. Yes, an act of Christian charity. To some people, a gift's a gift. I don't suppose he ever thought I'd be insane enough to... to... Uh, Hotel Rialto. Debenham. No, Denton. Denham Street. Denton Carey, Denham Street. <laughs> How could I forget? That's a pretty seedy part of town. Well, an American eccentric, you know the way they are. Scooby. Yes. Yes, I'm going. I said I would. I'm halfway there. My word is my bond. Scooby. Well. There. That's for you. <laughs> Steady on, Maggie. What's that for? A kiss from Major Best. For being the second man I can admire. Who's the other? Why? Bill Biff Cunningham, of course. Are you sure this is the place? Rialto, private hotel, says so on the gate. It's such a run-down ruin. Hmm. Well, ring the bell, get it over with. Well, nothing happened. It's not connected. Well, knock, then. Look out, stand back, the whole door's going. I'm blown, fell down flat, straight down off the hinges. Well, place is empty. Windows smashed, boards are all torn up. So this is Denton Carey's hideaway. What's that notice? Pinned up by the gas box. Something what? By the order of the... Well, the building's marked for demolition. It's been condemned. Denton has duped us. There's something pretty fishy here, old chum. Maggie? I see. I know that... what you said. I ought to. Bill Biff says it almost every time he takes a case. Something fishy. Oh, come on. Let's get back to your place. This is going to take some cogitation. Ah, says that too, word for word. Maggie, don't you think... Hey, hold on. Oh, wait a bit. Wait for me, old girl. Wait for me. you have here is a uh, problem in the guttering or else a downpipe's clogged. That means water runs along the joists and then drops down in the bucket. And you put up with this a leaky roof, damp rot in the walls. Oh, where's that cocoa? Second drawer, second left. Love my cocoa on a rainy night. 
Luckily, I did the washing up. Because <laughs> I can tell you when Denton Carey tossed that money on the table. You washed up Denton Carey's mug? Well, of course I did. What about the fingerprints? Fingerprints? He's not a criminal. How do you know? We had a first-class set of fingerprints and you went and... Oh, never mind. Pour the milk. Turn the gas off. They tell me challenge is the spice of murder. As Bill Biff says. Maggie, do you know what you just said? Me? That challenge is the spice of murder. You said murder. So I did. Well, it is. Well, it must be, mustn't it? But murder... Can I uh, sit here... Do you mind at the famous Scoby Dearden desk? Mm. You know... Your cocoa. Oh, that smells good. Just count the calories and let them rip. You know, Scoby, I've had just one dream to see me through my life. What's that, Maggie? To solve a true life murder case. And wouldn't it be absolutely smashing if my triple hundred homicide was a real live blood and guts who done it? Wouldn't that be absolutely soup? Maggie. It has all the makings. Man walks in, drops a bundle of notes, disappears, false address, money's hot or being laundered by the syndicate. Then they rub him out because he finked. Oh, it has a lot of lovely trimmings, yes. Maggie. Tell you what, we'll make a start first thing in the morning. Check those banknotes, get them verified. Ring the American Embassy in London, get a lead on Carey. Or immigration, that's an angle. Uh, Maggie, just a minute. Listen. Uh, and I, I'll just... Oh, oh. Uh, kick my shoes off. Settle in. Close my eyes. And listen to the rain. And... Maggie. Well, now what's wrong? I've never had a woman stay the night here before. Well, it's time you did, Scobie. You're twice times 21. <laughs> and then some more. But I have my reputation to... My readers to consider. I mean, if they get wind of this. Put the light out, Scobie. Throw me a blanket and turn the heater down. And if you wouldn't mind, set the clock for six. I like to get up with the sunshine. Maggie, where are you? Oh, six o'clock, oh, that woman. Maggie! The toast is under the grill and the teapot's on the table and I couldn't find the marmalade. What's the matter? You're in my dressing gown. Well, I had to wash my dainties. They're hanging by the fire. Good Lord. I got up at Coxcrow. Now, now, look at this. William Scobie Dearden, what do you make of that? It's Denton Carey's money. No, no, what it's lying on. Wrapping paper. Right. Imprinted with a pattern of interlocking monograms. B and B, back to back, all over. Oh, so it is. I hadn't noticed. Brewster's Bookshop. That's my bet. You really think so? Check the phone book. And you can see the crease lines of the books it started with. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, elementary, my dear Scobie. And what it means is Dent and Carey wrapped the money in a purchase from the bookshop. Yes, that seems a reasonable assumption. Then they'd know him, and we could verify. Verify the money? Verify your Dent and Carey. He's the only counterfeit in this case. I'll bet my boots. Maggie. Now, you get your glad rags on. Oh, rat. I burnt the blasted toast. I had to start again. <sighs> But as soon as Brewster's bookshop opens, we'll be there like a pair of bloodhounds. <laughs> Castle Ray Street. You know what that means? I can't imagine. Right near the U.S. Trade Exchange. You think there's some connection? Coincidence can spell conspiracy. As Bill Biff always says. Exactly. Watch it. Here comes Charlie Brewster. You know him. Well, it's written on the door. Charles Brewster, bookseller. Ah, interested in the classics? 
Or was it something lyrical? I see you lingering by the Wordsworth there. A golden poet, yes, indeed. Oh, what a joy it is to meet a cultured man. In fact, actually, if in you fact, don't mind. I have descriptive sketches, uh, limited, of course, with wood engravings by the famous... Mr. Brewster, if I can interrupt. Do I know you, madam? Not exactly, but we may have a mutual friend. An American. Oh, an American. <laughs> we don't see many of our transatlantic cousins in the musty world of books, you know. But he's a customer, quite recently. About so high, uh, rather fair. From Mississippi. Denton Carey. Oh, Mr. Carey. Oh, my goodness, yes. And what a stroke of luck this is. Really? His books have arrived. Uh, perhaps you'd care to do us both a kindness, or should I send them care of the exchange? Exchange? The, the Royal Exchange? No, 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 no. The United States Trade Exchange. No, we'll take them. I'm sure Denton will be delighted. Uh, won't he, Scobie? Hmm? Oh, yes, uh, delighted, yes. And uh, would you let him know, uh, now I know I put them somewhere, uh, that because the books are rather rare, the bill is £57? Scobie? Oh, uh, yes, right, we'll tell him, uh, £57. And uh, is it cash or entry? Or would you like to phone the trade exchange? Cash. My friend will fix it uh, in dollars, uh, won't you, Scobie? £57? In dollars? I'll just browse through the mystery section. Oh, I, I don't suppose you have an early Freeman Wills Croft, have you? Fifty-seven pounds. And in dollars. Oh, shut up, Scobie. We could have charged it to the U.S. Trade Exchange. And let them know we are onto it? Onto what? The missing person murder case. I wonder why people throw their beer cans in the fountain and leave their litter in a public park. Open the books. Rip the wrapping off. Oh, it's a bit unscrupulous, don't you think? Peeking into other people's books. Oh, here, give it here. Let me... I know he's dead. I feel it. I've got that creeping goosebump sort of... Oh, what a letdown. Is that all? Well, what did you expect? A bit more than a thesaurus and a dictionary. Oh, the old Roger. <laughs> and a Webster. But they might come in handy. Still at 57 pounds. Why would he want the Mackay edition 1947? And the Webster Dictionary from all those years ago. Perhaps he was a book collector. I mean, is a book collector. You've got me brainwashed with your murder case. And we are sitting here, guilty as hell, with someone else's property, and I've spent the rent, and I feel like a thief. Oh, soon fix that, Scooby. Grab your hat, and we'll trot on down to the minivan and find a phone book. Find a phone book? To locate the U.S. Trade Exchange. You and I are going to deliver Denton Carey's books in person. Maggie, are you sure this is the place? Two rooms, one telephone, and uh, the seedy smell of antiseptic. Well, it's exchange, all right. The only thing they should exchange is premises. Someone coming. Hey, have I kept you folks waiting? You caught me in the washroom and I was running up the flag. I mean, I was uh, putting up the front street flag. Outposts of empire, right? Show the flag, the stars and stripes. Now, what can I do for you? I'm Jean Capella. I'm Maggie Best and this is Scobie Dutton. The pleasure's mine. Put it there. Oh. Sit you down. Now, not the laid-back banana chair. That's temporary. Oh. And isn't everything? <laughs> funds, you know, the lack of funds. Inflation, boy. <sighs> so, uh, what exactly is the nature of your problem? Uh, Mr. Capella... I know, I know. Imports, exports, isn't it a bind? Goddamn trade restrictions. And they set us up in Beechwood Lane, Bournemouth. <laughs> I mean the U.S. government. And expect me, Capella, to work my miracles from what used to be a backstreet dental surgery on the south coast of England. Yes, we know. It's just too bad. Now, but just I... the same, no sweat. If I can expedite or bend the rules, despite the fact my staff are all away on holiday, I'll do anything, anything at all for the sake of transatlantic good relations. Then could we see your assistant, Denton Carey? Dent, Dent, Denton Carey? Actually, we have some books for him. Books? What kind of books? 
Uh, who for? Uh, who do you say? Denton Carey. Never heard of him. But, Mr. Cup, I, I have uh, never, that is never, not in my whole entire life, heard of... <laughs> Oh, 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 gee, I'm sorry. Oh, please forgive me. Pressures, red tape, the pile-up of the orders. No, no, truly, no. I've never heard of what's-his-name. Uh, there must be some mistake. You sure you want the trade exchange 11 Beechwood Lane? Mr. Carey ordered books from Brewster's, and they knew him personally from this address. Oh, ma'am. All I have here, when they are here, is my administration colleague, Dean Courtney, and our girl Friday, Sandra Lee Sutton. <laughs> and like I said, Mr. Dearden, uh, uh, ma'am, uh, that door goes nowhere except into the filing room. Now on this Christmas Eve.